Hello guys, what's up? I wanted to show you the yesterday's top 60 manufacturers cup final race with a better quality as well as with a better commentary I guess as you can already see by looking at the lobby itself it is filled with uh, with very very fast drivers for example Fa Firestorm, Adam, Alexoni, Steve Gaming Ch Tichney, Rick, Matu, Org, uh, Matty, Jerusal, Lucky basically all of them who made it into the top 60 um, yeah also uh, for this superstars race by looking at the points in a second come on yeah the first guy or basically the winner would be getting about 3860 points or so or let's say above 3800 points basically for those uh, for the superstars race here um uh, there was 1000 points given as a base point as well as having a 1.2 multiplier for all of the other points uh, as well um, But yeah, let me show you my qualifying lap for this race <laughs> So this is my final qualifying lap of the qualifying session yesterday also you needed to try and get the best exit out of possible to have the best top speed for the for the first straight line from start finish line basically the curb on the uh, left hand side is basically your breaking point here just try to take uh, or kind of hit the curb on the right hand side too and then as well as accelerating as early as you can also for the breaking point for the upcoming three left corners i believe you need to let's say throw your car a little bit in also just by let, um, letting off of your throttle and then also here accelerating as early as you can this break point here was a little bit random because I kinda like guess the break point there just try to stay as tight as you can throughout the next corners here um, and then the break point here is basically after the 100 meter breaking point there just try to hit the curb on the right hand side a little bit Again, to have the best traction for the back straight here. Um, and then, yeah, after the back straight, there's a, let's say, a slow right hand and left hander coming up. Basically, you could have cut the sausage curb there, but my car really disliked the curb. And for me, basically, not doing it consistently throughout the practice sessions, I tried to avoid the sausage curb there and just try to drive round the outside if you can say that but then yeah basically this was my qualifying lap I think it was definitely improvable especially the first sector because I didn't really nail the uh, the fast three left-hander corners there after the tunnel but yeah in the end it was a pretty solid lap and um, let's go over to the race yeah. So there we go, the final race of the first 2019 exhibition season of the Manufacturers Cup Series. Of course I was a little bit nervous too, because again this was a superstars race as well as the final race of the season. On first place we got Rick with the mighty FT1. Then on second place, myself, I don't even know how I ended up on this place to be honest. <laughs> on third place, Firestorm with the FT1 too. On fourth place, Matty with the Chevrolet. Good job, uh, yeah, good job by the way. On fifth place, uh, Adam with the BMW. On uh, sixth place, we got Musso with the Lexus. On um, seventh place, we got my teammate Org with the 911. I think he made a mistake on his last qualifying lap, but yeah. On eighth place, we got Lucky with the Park. 
uh, Puck. Wow. On 9th place we got Garrison with the Mustang. On 10th place we got Alexonian with the Porsche 911 2. On 11th place we got Matsu with the BMW again. On 12th place Steve came with the Jack. I think he had a disconnect uh, during the race. Then on 13th place Jules with the Puck again. On 14th place Citroen. Uh, no, Human C with the Citroen. <laughs> On 50th place we got Pitchney with the R8. I think he didn't even practice for this race alone, so yeah, good job to you mate. On 60th place Blazer with the Alpha. Yush! Um, I mean, uh, as for this race here basically, I literally started practicing for the Manufacturer's Cup yesterday. Just a little bit even, if I can say that. Because my main focus was basically just trying to do the Nations Cup instead. Because I thought, hey, I was already leading the Nations Cup um, one round before the finish, and I, I kind of like thought about, hey man, I could have just as well as defended it till the end, you know, the first position. But then afterwards, or basically after watching the Oceania as well as the Asia uh, stream about them doing the Superstars race, it was such a high risk doing the Nations Cup Superstars race first. And if you also wanted to do the Manufacturer's Cup one afterwards, then yeah, again, there was a risk of missing the Manufacturer's Cup one afterwards because the Superstars, uh, uh, the Nations Cup Superstars race was such a long session, basically five minute practice session as well as having a 50 minute qualifying. And if you cross the, let's say the, the finish, the start finish line right before the qualifying time has ended then you could pretty much still drive your uh, let's say final lap time where you were having about four minutes time remaining so and then having a eight laps for a uh, race for the, yeah basically eight laps for the race and yeah basically i also didn't want to risk of losing my sr as well as my dr stats and then as well as getting some random penalties at this track because um, Lemo with the current uh, track limits or penalty system is such a let's say one of those tracks where you can easily get a penalty in the end and I just wanted to avoid that uh, but yeah so I think one hour before the race basically I ended up saying to myself that I wanted to focus myself for the manufacturer's cup one instead because I think uh, finishing in a high position with McLaren would be good too because McLaren is one of those manufacturers in my opinion which is highly underrated in my opinion and also for the Nations Cup uh, by, o by also looking at the current ranking back then uh, by calculating every single thing I should still be ending up within the top 10 I believe as well as ending up on first in Germany so, so for me it was a little bit safe there. <clears throat> but yeah, let's talk about this uh, Manufacturer's Cup race again. Um, yeah, as you can already see, I was thinking about right after the race has begun that Rick was, uh, was going to pull away because the FT1 has such an insane stability throughout the corners. I think it doesn't even like the curves, uh, not as much as the MR cars for, but um, still. But then again, uh, after looking, let's say, at the time trial leader about there, I think Firestorm was setting the fastest lap time there with the FT1. And by looking at this lap time, the FT1 looked so stable uh, at this track, especially on the first sector there. But yeah, I was just trying to save my tires a little bit, because, um, again, driving an a, a MR car in Gran Turismo Sport is basically really hard especially that the rear tire are going to wear out, uh, wear out so quickly and I really wanted to look after that. Um, also for the fuel consumption here as we were racing 17 laps instead of 13 laps I believe we need to save uh, a lot more fuel too and then here Firestone tried to overtake me in the uh, on the inside I gave him space there but he touched a little bit with me 
and then uh, at the back Matty was taking full advantage of uh, our situation there and just did a let's say dive bomb there when I was streaming it yesterday I was of course uh, so much annoyed about that move because he was basically holding the two of us or basically the three, us, uh, three of us so much that Rick was able to pull away and getting a three second gap between him and uh, to Matty already, I think. Or, no, it's not even three seconds. It's about, uh, almost three seconds, basically. Yeah, in that moment I was just thinking about, hey man, why were you doing this? And, yeah. But, um, but yes, uh, it was a fair move. M Matty wanted to risk it. Of course, this was, this was even the third lap of 17 laps, basically. But yeah, for way as you can see, his, he was able to, to drive over the sausage curb quite easily and even cat, uh, co uh, catch it. Unlike my car, because if I would be driving over the sausage curb, my car would just basically just fly all, all over the place in the end. <laughs> yeah, I simply wanted to avoid that. But um, yeah, again, uh, I tried to stay as close as to Matty. Uh, I tried to stay as close to Matty as possible because I really wanted to overtake him, uh, overtake him as quickly as possible and therefore not losing so much time over to Rick because I really wanted to fight with Rick for some good places there but yeah um, but also for the main strategy uh, I was thinking about doing either a one stop or even a two stop strategy here because as I mentioned earlier, I started practicing yesterday, and uh, on the practice on the public practice session, I jumped in. I was testing out two different strategies there, yeah, <laughs> just trying to uh, show Matty that I wanted to overtake him and be a little bit faster. <laughs> and, but yeah, um, yeah, by doing those, or uh, well, let's say by testing out those two different st uh, strategies, I was finding out that both of those strategies was basically almost uh, almost exactly this uh, how do you say it uh, was almost as uh, well, equally fast in terms of the race uh, total time in the end which was a little bit surprising for me in the end but then again if you wanted to do a one stop then you didn't really need to look out for the traffic here and here I was I was taking Matty here which was pretty pretty crucial and critical uh, because by overtaking him there uh, there on I was able to pull away of him and then also closing the gap to Rick afterwards because surprisingly I was able to close the gap to Rick with his FT1 once the tire wear kicked in I believe because in my opinion the FT1 is basically one of the best cars in terms of tire wear but, but yeah let's uh, talk about the strategy again uh, by doing the let's say by doing the one stop it's basically the strategy that you really need to look out for your tires but then again you didn't really need to look out for the traffic because you were staying out as long as possible then heading in and just, just trying to drive with those a uh, set of new tires till the end unlike uh, let's say me and Rick who were doing two stop strategies in the end that once we put it in earlier than the one stoppers that we needed to overtake all of those one stoppers in, uh, yeah, in the meantime I guess because after we put it in we needed to overtake them again and then once we put it in again then over then re overtake them again you know what i mean right <laughs> so so it was a little bit risky by doing the two step strategy in my opinion the two step strategy was faster than the one step strategy i think but only slightly faster but then again it all depended on the traffic because the traffic could have uh, hold you up so much time or really uh, or basically really could have uh, hold you up so much because you will see that um, in this race later on but then yeah um, I think for the two step strategies it was like doing six laps or even five laps for the first in and if 
of, um, for example, if you were pitting in at the end of lap 6, then doing 5 laps and then finishing off uh, by doing 6 laps again. Or even vice versa, doing 6 laps again and then finishing off with 5 laps. A really, really set of fresh new, um, new tires. Um, but yeah, also for me, I was really just trying to uh, not doing any single mistakes at all, as the McLaren is really unstable through the sausage curve here, as you as you already saw it right now. Um, and then yeah, again, but for some reason this car understood so much. Even though this is an, this is was a, this is a MR car, <laughs> I already read some comments uh, comments uh, yesterday or uh, of the live stream that they were all also surprising that a MR car was understeering instead of oversteering. <laughs> I don't think um, it depended on the or let's say on the brake balance settings I put uh, I set it in because I put the brake balance settings all the way to minus four. But yeah, also after leaving the pit lane and rejoining the track, unfortunately Martu was overtaking me there and Rick was a little bit lucky there I guess. But then also fair play to Marty for letting me by. I think he also knew that he couldn't defend well with his old tires against my new set of fresh tires basically. But then here again I was a little bit lucky again with um, Ricky and, and not Ricky. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rick being held up by Firestorm and uh, not the Firestorm uh, of Muto. Yeah, uh, Musto. I mean, was Musto? Yeah, Musto. <laughs> yeah, but uh, on his point of view, it was pretty crucial for him because you will see it in a second that Musto was holding me up. Let's say again about uh, I, I wouldn't even say a second maybe but almost a second maybe because he could just pull away on this fast right hander while most of it is all the tires needed to break that earlier there you go that I really really needed to hold back that off uh, yeah yeah that often and uh, here I also use my right indicator to show him that I'm going to overtake him here in a, uh, in a minute yeah, in a few seconds. There we go. Make my move stick. And then just try to follow Rick again. But then from here now on, the... Ah, the... The race was pretty intense. I mean, for example, on the first sector, I think I was slightly faster than him, as well as on the second sector. But once we entered the third sector, where he could have taken full advantage of taking the of taking those sausage curves unlike me and he pulled away uh, uh, he pulled a gap uh, to, uh, between the two of us again so basically for the next couple of laps the gap between the two of us was basically consistent which was pretty cool to see I mean I think Rick and me were basically really on a mission <laughs> Just try, uh, just try to drive as fast as possible because, as you already see, on the current standings on the left hand side, there were still three drivers ahead of us, just doing the one stop, and we really needed to try and take the full advantage of the clean air, basically, or of the clean traffic that we were able to drive or trying to drive as fast as possible. So. We, we were not allowed to, let's say, being held up with our strategy and then, yeah, we really needed to no, uh, to drive as fast as possible, just try not to do any single mistakes at all. Also here to the fuel uh, consumption, it was also looking pretty good too, by short shifting a lot. I think there was one moment, which was basically at the end of the race, where I uh, turn up the fuel map a little bit again. I think it was just in case that I didn't want to uh, run out of fuel in the end. But um, yeah, surprisingly, this car was, in my opinion, also pretty good with the fuel consumption. Probably because it's a MR car in the end. But again, 
uh, yes, uh, safety fuel wasn't really that uh, of a big issue here. I don't know how it was with the FT1 though, uh, how much he needed to save fuel. But yeah, also here a little wiggle moment. <laughs> I think in the stream I was even saying that hey man, we were close to Rick. And after I said that, damn, having a wiggle moment, and then yeah, the gap has been raised up again, <laughs> which wasn't that optimal uh, for me personally. But then uh, I don't even know what to talk about. I mean, I really want to talk about what's going to happen in the last stint, but basically for here on, yeah, I will catch you guys later. <laughs> okay, I will catch you guys later. <laughs> Enjoy that one. <laughs> Yeah, long time no see or yeah, basically long time no see, uh, guys. <laughs> and this is the let's say the final lap of our second stint, I think. Yeah, before we are going to uh, 
go into the pit lane for the last time and then just try, try to drive as fast as possible again on the final stint and then again just trying to overtake all those one stoppers in the end I mean by looking at the gap we had over to Ork the, uh, I think he was the best driver by doing the monster strategies it was looking pretty pretty good uh, because with our new set of tires basically we were able to close the gap to Ork like one second or up to two seconds even over to our lap which was pretty crucial for us personally but as you can already see uh, I was a little bit lucky that Rick has been uh, held up by Firestorm here with his all the tires here I, li I did a uh, yeah, little mistake here unfortunately but it wasn't that crucial because you will see that uh, in a few seconds here yeah, Rick desperately just tried to overtake Firestorm there because I'm already closing down to him with the new set of tires I have and here Rick is trying to overtake Firestorm there uh, I think Firestorm miscalculated there a little bit again and then here, uh, here I am just trying to take the uh, slipstream here also just showing him again hey I want to overtake you here and with the new set of tires here I am I was not able to take the sausage curb bear in mind so uh, I think uh, Firestorm uh, thought that I would take the sausage curb because if I would have taken the sausage curb then we wouldn't have got a uh, if I had taken the sausage curb I mean we both wouldn't have collided each other or had a slightly contact so yeah during the live stream yesterday I was again wondering myself why why were you even deciding to just turn in even though I was there with the new set of uh, new set of fresh tires basically but yeah, but I think after watching it again, I think he uh, thought that I would um, that uh, I would have taken the sausage curve because it it is usually the faster way to take the chicane there, but I can't with my car. So, but here again, being lucky again, I guess because um, Rick is being held. Uh, yeah, hold up by Adam with the BMW and then me, I was literally just not really thinking about hey man, I really need to close the gap to Rick as soon as possible or as quickly as possible I was just trying to drive my own way and uh, as you can already see by the Delta time there also being on purple and here taking the sausage curb beautifully except for this one <laughs> And then here you can also see that Adam with his uh, older tires is going to strike a little bit on the fast right hander there. And this is going to help uh, Rick so much. And yeah, I, I was having the switch stream here. And then I was also thinking about hey man, what am I going to what am I supposed to do now? And then once Rick decided to uh, dive in, I just tried to follow him again too. Also, uh, yeah. Fair play to Adam for backing out too and for letting me by. And this was the moment where I was really thinking about hey man, now I am in the same in exact same situation where I wanted to be from right at the beginning of the race. So yeah, I was just thinking about taking the uh, full slipstream here, just trying to stay as uh, as uh, how do you say it as close as possible to Rick because I didn't want to do the slipstream over to Rick here because over there there was my team at all with the Porsche and yeah I, I'm not going to say we didn't even use uh, team tactics here I mean we both were just trying to drive for ourselves because all was also able to win the manufacturers cup in the end if he were finishing a ahead of us basically so uh, but yeah I was also hoping a little bit that Org would be holding up Rick a little bit again and yeah that I would be able to take the full advantage of that again here entering the 16th lap with, uh, with the tires looking pretty good as well as the fuel consumption so I would be able to 
um, let's say, uh, shifting up to the next gear later as I would normally do by short shifting and therefore giving me more power for the straight line. So here again, just not trying to overdrive it through the corners because once you honestly way too much, you will be coming. Oh, wait, this was also such a uh, <laughs> terrifying moment there because I, I was literally almost losing the car there for some reason. But then again here, Rick's being held up by Orc. He really, I think. Rick really wants to go for this move because he was thinking I think that if I don't overtake him here this is going to be crucial then. But then I was taking the slipstream here, Rick is uh, defending there on the right hand side. I was also uh, switching to the red there. And then I was also just trying to try a break as uh, wide as possible. But then surprisingly Rick uh, backed off. I was thinking about that Rick would be defending his position there but Later on, after watching it again, I think Rick wanted to re-overtake me on the straight line here by having the slipstream as well as the better, let's say, cornering speed for the fast right-hander. But then, luckily, I was a little bit too far for him to uh, for him to overtake me there. Also here, just letting the door a little bit open there. But then from here now on, I was thinking about Heyman just. Just drive it safely. But I didn't even finish my sentence there for this um, fast left-hander here. I, w I, I mustn't. Um, I wasn't allowed to overdrive, basic. Uh, let's say this car for this corner here, because once you get under here, they, uh, with those worn tires, you would basically just run way too wide and losing so much time because you because dust would be coming onto your tires. And then if you would be coming completely off the track, then I think you would also be getting a penalty there for some reason. But yeah, it is how it is. And then here I was also thinking about, okay, if I would be staying ahead of Rick before entering the social cut here, then the victory would be mine, I think. Also here, just trying to avoid the sausage cut there, because I didn't want to slide out my car there. And here shifting up early for the better traction, I guess. And also here, not not to drive it that aggressively, just just driving it as safely. And then here showing my indicator to Rick that we both were having a an amazing race. Also, yeah, great shout out to Rick for that. I mean, I think almost every single other driver, or let's say 70 up to 80 percent of the other drivers would have defended the line heavily if it was uh, if they were in Rick's position but yeah great shout out to you Rick uh, you did amazing well with the FT1 for this race here as well as for the old uh, for all the other guys yeah what can I say it was a pretty cool season in the end never thought that I would be able to bring McLaren to the top because mm, yeah, McLaren is, as I said, a very, very underrated manufacturer. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the race. Um, if there's anything you want to say, just leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I hope I will see you guys in the next time. Cheers.